Well, it may happen. We want to bring in a couple of other guests we have joining us right now. Joining us is David Drucker, the senior congressional correspondent for the Washington Examiner. Also with us, John Gizzi, our own chief Washington correspondent here at Newsmax. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us. Good to thanks be here. for having us. All right, we just wrapped up our interview with Jeb Bush. Uh, wanted to get your reaction to what he had to say, David. We asked him about the potential of a Jeb Bush surge in South Carolina. Are you hearing anything similar to that? Well, look, I, I, all of the sources that I've been checking with, and I've been in D.C. this week, and so I've been furiously emailing and been on the phone and looking at data, leads me to believe that the most likely top three finishers are going to be Donald Trump, Marco Rubio, and Ted Cruz. Um, and that Donald Trump is positioned for first, and that Cruz and Rubio are fighting it out for second. Now, South Carolina, like a lot of the early states, can break late and has notoriously surprised people. Um, but I think that that's probably your best bet for the top three, and then we're trying to figure out exactly how strong or weak of a you know, first, second, and third uh, do they finish. Obviously, if you're first, there's really not a weak first. Right. Um, but second and third sometimes can be played as both weak or strong. Hey, David, we got to give you high marks for putting the whole family to work up there. I hear them at work uh, behind you there as you're Skyping in from D.C. and want to thank you very much for that. Let's, let's move to our pal John Gizzi on the ground now in South Carolina. Uh, John, while uh, our friend David has been emailing and uh, using all the social media, there you are face to face with voters in the Palmetto State. What's the vibe you're picking up right now, John? Congressman Joe Wilson, who says hello to you, J.D., spent a lot of time with me yesterday and is taking me to the polling places tomorrow. Um, but one of the things that Congressman Wilson warned and that other people have been saying is South Carolinians are notorious for last minute mood swings and abrupt changes in their voting pattern. Uh, the congressman recalled how four years ago he felt sure Mitt Romney would win and wrap up the nomination in his home state and then they had a debate in which Newt Gingrich scored in a very big way and many voters, among them Congressman Wilson and his wife Roxanne, changed from Romney to Gingrich. Similar things could happen this year and frankly the word on the street in Columbia and elsewhere in the Palmetto State is a Trump victory is not a done deal. Well, one of the things that Trump has been talking a lot about this week is 9-11 and the Bush administration. Of course, we all know the Bush family, very popular in South Carolina. David, do you think that Trump's, uh, he's been all over the map uh, on his answer to 9-11, and there's a lot of stuff out there, old clips resurfacing. Do you think this might backfire on him, and that what, that's what may be driving Look, this? We know Trump can lose. We know he's not infallible because he lost Iowa, and um, all of the polls showed him winning that going away, and that's not the way it turned out. And I, I've been trying to look through the data and see if the debate hurt him and to see if the positions he has taken has hurt him. Yeah. You'd think that if you're a Republican running for your party's nomination, that blaming Bush rather than Obama for the fallout in Iraq, that saying that Bush lied us into a war in Iraq, that saying that you like the Obamacare mandate, which Trump then cleaned up again today um, and, and tried to put to rest, uh, you think all of that would hurt him. And, and it might, but we just don't know yet. And... Trump has had an amazing ability, more than any other candidate I may have ever seen, to say anything, no matter what, whether it was rude or whether it went completely against party orthodoxy, even for moderates and centrists, and somehow hold his support. And, and there's something else at work, gentlemen, and that is the fact that at times, even given his propensity for controversial comments, sometimes they're preempted. A case in point yesterday with the dispute with Pope Francis. Mm. Uh, John Gizzi, I'm just very interested because some of the polling we've seen, you know, it's not instantaneous. You get the snapshot 36 to 48 hours ago. Will the dust up with the Pope redound to Mr. Trump's advantage? Will he pull some evangelicals who ordinarily might have gone for Ted Cruz or Dr. Ben Carson? Yes. Uh, and I was talking about this with Professor Jim Guth of Furman University in South Carolina who has studied the evangelical voters for many years and written extensively about it. Uh, those who consider themselves evangelical or born again comprise roughly two-thirds of the participants in tomorrow's primary. Uh, getting into a dust-up with a pope, a pope considered liberal or progressive, 
is certainly not going to hurt a candidate here and Trump may well gain for it. Yeah. On the other hand, one sees Ted Cruz doing very effectively on television. One sees Marco Rubio drawing very big crowds at the end. Well, as, uh, John, we got to wrap it up because we're running out of time. But as Governor Bush mentioned, it's a jump ball. We'll all be tuning in tomorrow. Look forward to seeing you guys after the South Carolina primary. We'll come back after this.